All right, guys, welcome again to another Sunday night charting before this uh, next week we have coming up. We're going to start like the usual alphabetical order. So to start off the charting, we're going to have Airbnb, A, B, and B. Just like always, when I like to chart with you guys, I'm going to slowly start with the first few and explain why I start in the larger time frames. I want to get a bigger overview picture as to what is possibly forming that you can't see on the 30 minute, the one hour, the four hour. So I like to start on the daily or the weekly just to have that bigger picture overview as to where a possible rejection could be coming up pretty soon on a price action point or a possible support on a pullback. So looking at Airbnb in the current area, I don't see too much pinpointing. Obviously, there's a few wicks we have that correlate, and I'll bring up a highlight just to move that around so it's easier to see. So we had a little wick here, correlation-wise, two back-to-back -back almost in the same zone. And we had a few pullbacks that held support around that same area as well. So we could, on the daily for now, put a rough zone around 154 a share. In that area, there has been, when price action falls to it, a bounce, aka support. And then when price action leads up into that uh, level, it rejects as a resistance level. So I'm going to put a level at roughly 154 $155 a share. And I'll make this, uh, let's go a greenish. And now I'm going to take this down to the four hour. At this point with the four hour, I can scroll back, look back at the same zones we looked at on the daily, just to see, is there anything pre-market or after hours, or is there any other candle formations that now show that we possibly could not see on the daily time frame? You don't want to force levels. That's the biggest thing I love to tell people. Don't force, oh, this has to be a level. This has to be a level. Figure out the idea of a zone. Where is a rough estimate area where when the stock gets to, say, between a 2 to $3 area, there's going to be chops. So you understand a breakout may not happen right away. When looking at, I'm going to take a few levels on the downside off for a second. When looking at that 154 to 155 area, we can now visually see on the four hour that we've held support before. When we've broken down, we've tried to pull back and break above and reject it. When we're above and we pull back, it holds support. When we're underneath and push back to the upside, whenever we do break above that, it doesn't hold very strong every time. There's always like a break and a recontest when it goes upside. So understanding that we have a zone between 154, 155, it's shown relative correlation with price action. And if we flood back to uh, June of, uh, what was this, 2022? June of 2021, we see price action respecting that area pretty well when it breaks above it can't hold when it finally did break above it had that pullback underneath but it held support every time it pulled back to that level around 154 155 so now that i have a rough area above i don't want to put too many levels on this but i, I want to find at least one more level for resistance on airbnb and i like my gaps i don't want to find a level like 155 156 157 I want to find something like the 160s possibly. I, I want to see the gap that Airbnb could fill. So looking at this level, I want to make this one red just so it stands out a little better. Notice how pullbacks around this area held support. Pullback held support. When we broke under, recontest for resistance, reject. When we broke back above, pullback, tried to hold support, tried to hold support. So this zone, it's not a dead point 160 a share, but 159, 160, 161 area we have relative correlation with price action. If I scroll back a little bit more, back to when the IPO happened, that's roughly around the actual starting point of the IPO share price on Airbnb. So moving this towards the actual time frame now, we have the main 154, 155 level, which is basically a tap out we had from Friday's high. So we know we're at an area where we could see a rejection. If we pull back, we've had the same level from the previous week around 1, uh, 151 a share. So we have a level for support. If you want to add another level, now that we've had about a week of more movement, we can find another zone below 151. If we break under that support, we have a lower level now where we had a historical resistance. Once we broke above, we're trying to hold it as support on every pullback. So adding a level here to the, like the main support, this breaks, we're going to fill the gap underneath the previous support that we had. It's like the same setup as Amazon. The gaps of support, resistance, support, resistance, breaks above resistance, now it acts as support. So we have a level for the first resistance at 154, 155. Main resistance breakout, I would say, is roughly 160 a share. 
if we pull back to support, we have a 151 level and then 147.5 area. So moving over to AI now, I'm just gonna go to the daily just to see a bigger picture for myself and you guys can see it as well. We don't have to add levels from what we did last week. We're still in the same zone from 37 for support, 37 a share and $42 a share for resistance. We're still zoning. So taking this down to the 30 minute, now you can see why I always tell you guys, focus on the gaps. You can just be patient and wait every time the gaps get hit. Okay, we're rejecting here double top. I'm going to go puts light and trust to move back down. Okay, we filled the gap. I'm going to go calls now. Okay, we filled the gap back up. I'm going to go puts again. You size light and trust the chart. If it does go higher when you get puts the top or if it breaks out and pulls back and holds support, that's the classic idea of what I like to tell you guys about if a breakout happens and you miss, like say it doesn't show uh, resistance, no selling pressure, you don't want to buy puts at that level for a low risk, high reward. We break out to the upside, see if we pull back and hold this level with consolidation, showing that buyers are stepping in when sellers historically used to hit that level. So AI right now, we're bouncing off support around that 37 a share area, trying to push back up. Until we break and hold above 42 a share, we're going to keep consolidating. Or until we break underneath 37 a share as that support level, we have a level just under it at 35 a share, but we're zoning. So until these levels break, there's not much you can really look forward to because it's been almost a whole month straight of just 42 a share tap out, back down to 37, back up to 42, et cetera, et cetera. So this is going to be a patience game. Same levels as last week. There's nothing to change on this. So Baba, we did chart this last week. So we're going to go over the levels we had on the previous week of charting and then where we currently are and what to look forward to on the upside or a possible pullback to a last week resistance we had, which is now going to act as support. So on the four hour, as you guys can see, this is one of my favorite setups. And I'm going to extend this highlight just to show you exactly from start to finish where I like to see it. We are currently forming that cup. We had a bearish transition on the downside, lower highs all the way down, and then lower lows as well following that. When I see formations of a falling wedge or lower lows, lower highs, I want to see the trend reverse into a bullish standpoint. I want it to give me conviction that we found a bottom. Now show me the upside. That gives me the idea to go long on calls or at least wait to see better conviction as to when are we actually going to have those higher highs, those higher lows. So seeing this cup form, if you understand the process of this formation for the uh, setup, we usually form a handle, which is a smaller falling wedge based off the brim of the cup, which for uh, Baba, that's going to be roughly around that 103 to 104 a share. If we push up to that level and break above, that's the strategy I like to talk about. Break above 103 a share, 104 a share. I'm going to put a level here, actually, just so it's a better visual for you guys. So around here, about 103.5, between 103 and 104 a share. And I'll make this color yellow, and I'm going to change the colors underneath just so they look a little bit better. So going off that, quote, unquote, the brim of the cup, like this is like the overflow. If the stock goes above, it's like the water you're still pouring into the cup. The water overflows at the brim. That's the 103.5 to $104 a share area. If we break above, look for the recontest to that level to form that handle on the cup and handle. That's when that falling wedge starts to form. Price action is holding and it's not selling off. It's just forming that direction. So look for something that comes up, kind of drops down, makes lower highs, lower lows, but it holds support and then rockets off. This is the setup that usually occurs when we have this canyon formation. Like it's like a hole. You're digging down and then you come back up. So as Baba moves, we broke above the $99 share, $100 share resistance we had, and we didn't pull back very heavy towards that, but buyers were present. When we broke above, we held on that level, around $100 a share, and we pushed up higher. So knowing that Baba has an $100 share resist, uh, a support, resistance to support flip, underneath that, we have roughly $97 to $98 a share for another support. So we have massive supports underneath. The resistance is not very far away. Looking at the main 103, 104 a share, that's going to be the reject if we push higher on Baba. So it's very, I would say, cautious wise to not just chase calls, but see what price action presents this week with the stock. 
So moving over into Bank of America, BAC, I'm going to go to the daily real quick just to show you guys the bigger picture. I know how it looks, but I want you to see what's been going on. We found a base. Same formation that I love to catch on. If we make higher lows with major support around the same consolidation area, it's always nice to go long on positions like this. So as Bank of America broke out, finance has been a hot sector recently. We broke above the $31 share resistance and we're holding. So the main thing that I personally like to look for is that pullback to support if we get it. It's about a 50, uh, what, 90, about a 90 cent drop back to the support area, around $31 a share for that support. If we pull back, that is going to be the lowest risk for a loading zone for calls if you don't want to chase the breakout. Focusing on the same idea of like a cup and handle formation, we have the brim that's basically broken out of Bank of America. If we get that pullback, aka a falling wedge of lower highs, lower lows, price action will hold and give us that confirmation that we can buy time and let the setup do the work. Let the people, the hedge funds, the share buyers, let them do the work, add time, and let the contract work its way out. Uh, weekly on Bank of America is a nasty shooting star. Let me pull up the weekly real quick. There we go. Just so they can see it too. I can't zoom in very close on Weeble because these stupid things that pop up, but there we go. Could there be a pullback? Could there be sellers after this massive uh, run up two weeks ago from 29 a share up to $33, $32 a share? That's why for me personally, I like to wait to see if we have that retracement. Resistance breaks, see if the support holds on a pullback. Should you do coin? Yeah, I'll do coin as well. I'll add that. Don't worry, I got you. So just going off uh, Bank of America for a short recap overall, going off the daily, the main gaps that I, looked at, I like to look for is a tap out. I'm not really focused on all this noise in between of like these pullbacks, consolidations. I'm liking the area around here, which is about $34 a share. The reason I put that there, multiple days on the daily time frame, we've had resistance. When we're underneath, resistance we try and break above pull back under those wicks are dead on around 34 a share more underneath again resistance we're not able to hold above there's not many buyers that are present in that area but sellers are we break above we break under easily when we're underneath trying to break above that level it rejects very quickly so understanding that as we push up possibly on bank of america this week or next watch the resistance around 34 a share but watch the pullback to watch to see if calls hold around that $31 a share area. If 31 breaks, we have a level underneath around $30 a share for that support. So I'm gonna do coin right now since that's kind of the alphabetical order at the moment. I know it's after CL, but I'm just gonna get out the way now. So uh, Coinbase, you guys know the, obviously we had that huge news with XRP, pushed it, crypto had a run. Currently, we are basically rejecting that level I gave you guys around $112, $111 a share for that double top from last time we had a news release. Now we're pulling back to the support that I kept mentioning, $85 a share. I personally want to load calls around $75 a share. I'm not sure if it will come that low, but the idea of watching for the main support levels after a breakout, you don't want to chase the move. If you know historically a resistance was very heavy, it was unable to break out every time. We basically had a triple top around 85 a share. Wait to see if Coinbase can pull back and hold this level as support now. 85 a share. We still have about $10 more to go on the downside. We may not fill the gap, but that's the lowest risk, highest reward probability. As we form these lower highs and lower lows, watch the 85 a share. If we do push up, we have resistance at 103 a share. And above 103 is the actual like historical double top around $112 a share on Coinbase. As of now, we're zoning. Personally, I would wait for 85 a share or the 75 a share if 85 can't hold. We still have a gap. We're in the middle of that 103 to 85 a share on the up and down side for support and resistance. It's going to be a patience game. Do you want to wait to see if that 85 holds and recontest since historically that was a very big rejection zone that could not break above? Or do you want to focus on, I'm just going to get in now and add time and hope it works out. Patience is key with this. So moving over to Colgate, CL now. Daily chart, look at all this consolidation. I'm going to switch to the weekly so it's easier to see. We've been zoning between the same two levels. 
roughly $81 a share, $70 a share, up, down, up, down. Taking this down to the daily time frame now. On this smaller frame, we're trying to hold support around the $74 share, $73.50 area. So understand on the weekly, we're in a channel. On the daily, we're trying to hold a massive support that can't break, but we're also making lower highs in the process. So comprehending that, I take it down to the four hour, the two hour. What can I see on the smaller picture now? It's trying to break out. On the four hour, we can see it's trying to get those higher highs going. It's very sloppy. It's not a pinpoint like textbook material, but you see the higher highs forming with the same support. Could this be a potential dip by that just happened and it could go back to the upside? We have a main support on this current smaller frame around $33.80 a share, $33.50, or $73 a share, $74 a share is the main support. Underneath for the weekly time frame, we have a massive support around $70 a share. And of course, the main resistance is roughly $81 a share on the upside. We're channeling, and we're currently in the dead center of the weekly consolidation. So it's kind of like a hit and miss with this kind of setup. Moving over to Chipotle, uh, CMG. If you guys didn't know, they had earnings this past week, and it dropped almost 200 points. So we're uh, currently right back to the previous earnings where we gapped up. That's where we're currently sitting. If we look at the previous all-time high with uh, Chipotle, we're zoning around the previous all-time high, currently underneath. Can we break back above where sellers hit historically? Can we break above that level? It's a zone between about uh, 1923, $1,923 and $1,940. Around that area is a massive resistance. Going to the four hour now, can we keep that momentum or could we just bear flag here, make lower highs and start the downtrend on, on Chipotle on the downside? This is going to be an interesting setup. It's a very timely thing. I would say it's kind of like iffy to figure out as of now it's rejecting. So it's looking bearish over bullish. The earnings had a drop off. We could fill the gap back to the actual support we had around this zone at roughly uh, $2,030 a share. If we do push up, that's going to be a main resistance. Until we reach that level, though, we have the previous all-time high zone, which is roughly around 1930, 1930 a share. If we reject that and pull down, that is when I'm going to go back to the daily and show you guys. I like to look for the gap fills from historical earnings or gap ups that have happened. This is going to be the zone I'd be focused on for me personally. And that's around, I'll put a level so you can see it. Around 1816, $1,816 a share. This is a very sketchy setup, in my opinion. I'd be cautious. Earnings have to drop off. Could we push higher? The main levels that I, you see on the screen, the main resistance, which was a historical support, $2,019 a share. The closest resistance that we're holding from the previous all time high is roughly $1,930 a share. And then, of course, the gap fill that I see on the downside is roughly around. $1,816 a share to fill that support gap. So moving over to Disney now, same as uh, AI. There's not much to add here. We're still zoning the same area. Disney is still holding that 85 a share. And I told you guys, until I want to go bullish on this, I want to see a break and hold above $87, $88 a share. $88 a share to be more precise. And just like what Chris just said, if Disney drops below 84, even holds underneath 85 a share, look at the death that's on the rise for Disney. The all-time low, obviously, is if you go farther back on the weekly, we have a drop off. But focus on there's not much support to hold underneath 84 a share. We have $79. But in the smaller time frame, if 84 breaks, like Chris just said, this could free fall. But it's holding very well right now. Is there enough buyers to keep this up? For me personally, I want to see a break and hold above $88 a share to go long on this. I don't have enough conviction right now, even though 85 is holding, but we have a resistance at 87 a share, 88 a share, and then we have the gap fill up to 90 a share and 94 a share. Disney looks good until 85 and 84 break. Outside of that, there's not much to really update on this chart. It's in the same spot as last week, literally the same area. Major support, 84, uh, 85 a share. If 84 area breaks and holds underneath, we're going to fill the gap underneath to 80 a share. On the upside, 
main main resistance we need a break above and a hold is $88 a share on Disney. So moving over to ENPH, once again, another earnings drop off that happened. So we're back underneath the channel that tried to hold support on ENPH. The levels we had uh, last time, they all are invalid at this point. So I'm going to move these down accordingly to readjust in the current time frames for price action. Going off the earnings drop, it's very difficult to find levels when something like this happens. I mean, Chipotle was a good example. So looking at ENPH, we have to find a zone or at least some type of correlation that we can use for an area. And around the previous low, at around 154 a share, 153 a share, we've seen price action pull back, to try and hold support. We've also seen on the upside, it has a resistance area. Pullback tries to hold support. Pullbacks try to hold support. So we have a good rough estimate. And using the smaller time frame from the four hour, we're basically using the support that's trying to now act as a resistance in this area around 154 a share. So we have a good consensus for resistance. So where's the support zones? This is gonna be the difficult part. We're bouncing off the earnings release. So we can use the 137 as a support level. And I'm gonna actually put a level there and then go back to the daily and see if there's any correlation around 137 a share that we could possibly use or anything above or below that to give us more like uh, evidence to use that level. So going off the daily, there's not much going on that I see right now. We tried to hold support on pullbacks around that level back here. So back in 2021, that 136, 137 area was acting as price action resistance or support based on where it was going into it. Above, pullbacks to it held support pretty well. Underneath, it was rejecting around that 136, 137 area. So we can keep that level and use the earnings drop off as a key support if we pull back again. As of now, uh, the main gap fill, 190 a share, if we push back up, we'll be back inside this consolidation of a 190 resistance and a 154 support. If we break back under 154, I do expect us to fill the gap to the earnings release when we uh, dropped out and tapped at 137 a share. Outside of that, just like with every earnings release, waiting for days to form gives you more conviction before you just like force an entry based off, oh, the earnings dropped it, it has to pull back to the upside. I would be patient just to see how this forms in the next few days, if not the next few weeks, just so you have more uh, conviction when you make an entry on this position. So now looking at Ford, Ford had earnings this past week as well. They sold off. And as of now, just like I used to tell you guys, I'm going to switch to the daily real quick. I love to use historical levels on lower highs, higher lows, and use those in the current time frames. So Ford right now is currently around a zone at roughly $13.20 a share that acted as a resistance historically multiple times. So understanding that, if we break under and hold, I'm going to switch to the four hour now. I'm actually going to put a level there instead of just talking about it. I don't want to go away. So around $13.20 a share, we've had price action relative correlation with that. Whether it's pulling back towards the support, it, it respects it, or it's pushing up towards that, it rejects it as a resistance. Underneath that $13.20 a share, we have a level at roughly $12.75, $12.70. So we have a pullback. Ford doesn't move very quickly. So you have to understand having like a 50 cent gap on a stock like this, that is a relatively good gap fill for Ford. So at the current area of $13.25, we have a rejection slash support, depending on where price action is. If we drop under, I do suspect a bounce or at least some price action of buyers to step in at roughly $12.70 a share, $12.75. If we push back up, we're gonna use the support that tried to hold around $13.70 as a resistance now. That is gonna be our resistance on a pushback for forward. Support flip to resistance trend. So those are the main levels that I see. I'm gonna take away the 14 and the 15 up here. So current level, looks like a head and shoulder on four. Yeah, head and shoulder as well. I'm curious what you're talking about. The earnings drop off had that happen. So using that head and shoulder on the support zone, we can use that as a resistance if we push back up. If we break above $13.70, we're back into this zone between $14.20 and $13.70. So it's just gonna be another up, down, up, down. If we push back to $13.70 a share and reject, 
we have that 1320 a share. And then underneath that for a support zone, we have $12 and 70 cents area. Yeah, I would not be surprised if we dropped back down to the main support at the bottom. Uh, I had us enter calls around here back in May and that was around $11.25. I would not be surprised if we break back down into that area between $11.80 and $11.50, if not lower. Board's not looking too good from a technical standpoint. So this could have been just like a, a run up to get out of shares for the big boys. We hit this double top on Ford right here and it rejected perfectly. And now we're selling back off. So we could go right back to, all, I don't wanna say all time lows, but at least like the year lows in 2023, it is possible. So going over to uh, FSLR, energy solar type stock, going off the daily. Last time we talked about this, this trend line is not 100% accurate, but I want you guys to realize we're making higher lows. This is a visual. It's not like a pinpoint enter when it touches. It's just to give you guys the idea we're making higher lows as we push upside. We had three main levels on FSLR. We pushed up during the week and we broke above the $218 share and we rejected that level and pulled back to the downside. We currently have a level at 205, same level as last week we talked about. If we drop lower, and I will have to add this level in case we do, I'm gonna put it roughly around in the current smaller picture. We had a pullback around that zone for support. Once we broke underneath, we had rejections a few times. It was not able to hold very well. Once we broke back above that $195 share, we held support on pullbacks. So we have a level for support at $195 a share. Uh, the support slightly where price action is right now is roughly $205 a share, same level as last week that we talked about. On the upside, we have a resistance at $218 a share. And then like the breakout like level, like if this level breaks and holds, it should push FSLR to like new highs that's around $235 a share. So moving over to uh, FXI, we have not charted this one before, so I'm gonna go to the weekly to see a bigger picture of it. And we've been consolidating for a while. Going back down to the daily, this is gonna be an iffy one to chart only because the ETFs don't have uh, much movement. They move very slow, but they have areas we can find. So looking at this chart, we're in the same formation that multiple other uh, chart setups that we've seen have right now. We have a base at the high or a brim. We had that bearish setup. I'm just drawing these lines so you see what I'm talking about. We're making lower highs, making lower lows. Now we're trying to flip to make higher highs and higher lows. We're trying to get back into a bullish transition with the trends. So understanding that and seeing that from the four hour time frame, I'm going to take this down to the hourly. And we're gonna look at this from like a pullback perspective. Where could levels hold if we pull back? And I'm actually gonna switch over to the two hour. So we have nice levels of support around this area. It's not gonna be a pinpoint because it's not very uh, accurate. It's not like very precision wise. So we're trying to find a zone for this FXI, roughly around $29 a share, $29.20 to $29.50. That is gonna be a nice pullback on the actual uh, ETF for this index so i'm going to put a level around that area just so it's there for a visual so roughly around 29 dollars and 50 cents 29 dollars and 30 cents that is going to be the first support if we pull back if that level does break on the pullback it's good to put a level at roughly 29 dollars a share 28 dollars and 90 cents area you're trying to find multiple rejections based off price action for support or whether it's price action pulling back down as, as a support level you're trying to just find where does price action respect the zone? So we have these areas. When we break above, we can't hold it very well at 29.50 area, 29.45. So we have two main supports. Now going back to the four hour, where could our first rejection be if we keep pushing to the upside? I may have to go to the daily for this just to see a better idea. So using the daily time frame. Can we find a possible gap fill to the upside? I'm really liking this area right here. I'm just trying to find an idea of multiple correlations, not just one candle like this red one right here. I'm trying to find other areas that also respect that zone. So it shows me it's happened multiple times. I'm gonna put a level at roughly $30.80 a share in that zone. We've had rejections on price action when it pushes up and it rejects. 
when it's above that area, we've had pullbacks to support and it shows buyers step in. So we know this zone has a relative like conviction when price action approaches it. So now we have an idea for at least one upside potential on FXI. And that's roughly $30.80 a share. It's about a 70, uh, 70 cent push from the current price action is on FXI. So just a quick review for this. If we push upside, we'll see a rejection at roughly $30.80, $31 a share area. Support pullbacks, we have a level at $29.45 area, $29.40. The main support that will hold if we pull back that far is roughly $29 a share, $28.90. So now moving on to INTC, which is Intel. Intel just had earnings this week as well, pushing upside. And I'm going to put a trend line just to show you guys a visual perspective. If you're able to catch stuff like this before it happens, add time to contracts. If you buy shares, buy shares for the long term. Watch how trends go into a bullish transition. Higher lows, higher highs start to form. Could Intel break out and fill a gap to historical support slash rejection zone to get that fill where people want to get out of shares or possibly short or go long if it breaks above and holds? We have a level at roughly $39 a share on Intel. This could be a very good level for a gap fill before we have any pullbacks on the stock. Obviously, if you're looking at it from a smaller picture on the four hour, we're hovering right at a possible double top. So first we have to break and hold above $37 a share on Intel. If we can break and hold above 37, I do expect $39 a share to happen. If we pull back, we have a level for support at $34.30 a share area. Underneath that, we have another level at $33 a share that will play out. So moving into IWM now, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. We talked about this last week and the levels are still respecting. We've been zoning between the main resistance breakout I've been talking to you guys about is roughly $197 a share, around $197 a share. Every time we pull back, we're holding support at roughly 193.5 to 194 a share. If that support does break on the downside, we should fill the gap to roughly 189 a share to $190 a share. Outside of that, there's not much more to talk about. I'm going to go to the daily just to show you why that 196 area is heavy. We're basically at a triple top right now. A rejection in this area is not abnormal, but if we break above, we're going to have a nice momentum push after a few days of consolidation of buyers not being able to step the price up. This could have a multi-day breakout up to 204, possibly 220 a share if it breaks that 210 area. IWM could have a nice breakout coming, but we need a break and hold above that 196 to 197 a share area to show that bullish transition. So moving down to IXJ. This is another ETF and it's the uh, healthcare sector. So looking at healthcare, I'm gonna go to the bigger time, uh, time frame just so you guys can see it's at all time highs. It's basically trying to form that transition I keep talking to you guys about. Lower highs form, lower lows form. Now we're trying to flip into a bullish transition off trends. Notice how we're not making higher highs though. So price action is squeezing. That's what we're noticing. Buyers aren't pushing the price higher. It's always getting tapped out of the same area almost. So we're squeezing to a point where healthcare could either break massive on the upside or to the downside. Price will just keep squeezing like what I have right here. I'm trying to find a way to make this. There we go. I'm going to move this back. Beautiful. So this ETF, IXJ, it's just squeezing right now. It could break out right now, but we're at a resistance zone. The resistance is currently at this $87 share area. If we reject that and pull back, watch for higher lows. In between the higher lows, we do have a possible gap in between that may hold support around this highlight I just put in. And I'll put a level there just so you can see a number visual as well. Around $85 a share, we could see support hold. If we don't see $85 a share hold, Follow these uh, lines I just put. We'll keep making that trend of higher lows tap out at the same resistance until we finally break price action, whether it's on the downside or the possible upside of where this will go. This is nice to keep an eye on because healthcare sector, knowing where the ETF is going, 
will give you an advantage for actual stocks like uh, CVS, uh, Johnson & Johnson, other stuff in healthcare sector you can use to this advantage to see if the ETF is going to break out or not. Currently, it's at a resistance, so logically a pullback may happen this week. So going into uh, KWEB, China ETF, looking at this, well, uh, China Internet ETF, going off the bigger picture, same transition. I'm hoping you guys are picking up on why I like the bigger picture so I know what could be forming the next few weeks or days upon us with what we look at. Making lower lows, lower highs. Now we're trying to make higher lows and attempting to break out of that channel. As of right now, it's broken out, showing that strength. So taking this down to the four hour now, where could we see a possible pullback? Where is the resistance that's gonna approach it from the previous bearish trend we were making? This is when your charting has to be used with patience and not just respecting what happens. We could catch a pullback and hit this double top that would act as support around $30 a share. If we don't have a pullback, we're gonna have a massive resistance around this gap fill level at roughly $33 a share for KWEB. So understanding this, this is when you're able to basically put yourself in the position of, do I wanna try and guess which way it's gonna go? We're basically in the dead center of this area. Uh, $1 to the upside to resistance, $2 to the downside for a support. It's a 50-50 shot right now. So what could happen? Do you wanna wait for a pullback to get calls? Do you want to just watch it and see how it reacts? Do you want to get calls and hope it just keeps going? We also have a rejection area where we're currently at. So price action may be hesitant in the current area around $32 a share. The main gap resistance at $33 a share, main support at roughly $30 a share. We're going to probably zone or continue breaking out to the upside. I would wait to see what the next few days include for this stock to see if any uh, directions given from a more conviction standpoint. So I'm gonna start on the weekly for Meta. That's what we're currently looking at. The idea of knowing we had earnings, it's still breaking out and we're back to heavy consolidation that was not able to break on the bigger picture at roughly $354 a share on Meta. I'm gonna take out a few of these levels underneath because price action has to break lower before they recontest. Going to the daily now for Meta. The last two levels we talked about was $305 a share. And then the main uh, support we were talking about, if earnings dropped off, $290 a share area. That is like the gap fill from the previous drop off where support tried to hold. Using the gap fill on Meta, could we fill the gap to $354 a share? Could we break the all-time highs? This is when you just have to be patient or figure out in the smaller picture, where is a possible good entry? As of now for Meta, if you're looking to play calls or puts and not wait for like a zone to fill, use historical price action on the smaller picture to give you conviction to make low risk, high reward in your favor. If we get a pullback and a hold around $316 a share for Meta, that could act as a nice support zone before that 305 touches again. Going outside of that, we have the uh, Thursday high at roughly $330 a share. If that breaks, we could see a run up to 354. So as of now, it's in the move to make higher highs and hold support that keeps those higher lows forming. Could Meta keep the momentum going for the bullish transition to fill the gap? That is the question for the week with Meta as a stock. 354 gap fill. If we pull back, are we gonna hold support at 316 area? Historically, it double topped curled and sold off, but it found a base support at 300, uh, $290 a share at the bottom and it pushed upside after earnings. If we can pull back and hold the 316 area, Meta could have a nice slingshot off that level that will look like this. If we just break out from here, obviously just straight push up to 354 a share. That is what I expect to happen. Either a pullback to 316 and it launches, or we just uptrend to 340, uh, 354 a share to fill that gap. So looking at MRNA, I'm going to take this out to the bigger picture. I know what it looks like, but I want you guys to realize we're at a massive support on the bigger picture. We're trying to hold this support. And if we don't, same situation as Disney, we're going to have a flush. Roughly down to almost $104 a share. It's almost a $14 drop when we currently are. Going off the four hour, there's not much to talk about with uh, Moderna. It's all about holding support and transitioning 
out of this bearish trend and try and get these higher lows to form and get that upside push. We need a break and hold above 129 a share. If you want to lower that a bit, you can put a level at roughly 126, 127 area. We need a break and hold to show a bullish transition into trends. We're still making lower highs, lower lows. We're slowly trying to make a higher low, but can we hold this level and push to the upside? There's not much support other than just the 117 a share. We're just gonna see momentum for a bullish transition. It's a little too soon to look into Moderna for a play at the moment. So going off Netflix, looking at Netflix, I'm gonna go to the daily so you guys see why we resisted at $500 a share. I can get this Coming back, we have a main support at roughly the $460 share. Above that, from this historical zoning we had for a while, between almost 570 and the main support at the 460, but we had a lot of holdings around this area at roughly 482. 485 area that was a massive support historically which is now acting as a resistance zone which was practically the tap out for the current area of netflix before the pullback 485 482 area was the rejection zone because the earnings re uh, report that we had now that we're back down to the support we're at that 414 on the smaller picture not the bigger picture on the daily but the four hour if we go back to these levels around the 416 420 area it was never able to break down the upside historically it would reject reject and that's when those lower highs started to form until netflix started to have that base and then as the transition from bearish momentum to bullish we hit that run up that's when we started to push so all we're doing right now with netflix is recontesting the historical zone that couldn't break to the upside we're trying to hold that as support now could netflix hit the same transition like it did back here it has a downtrend momentum of a bearish sediment only to flip to a bullish standpoint and make those higher lows and higher highs. This is what I'm going to be watching for Netflix this upcoming week into August. Can we flip and pick the momentum back up? Can we hold the 414 a share for support? Can we hold above this 423 area and push back to 460, if not 480 on the upside? So looking at NEO, NEO currently breaking out, obviously, we talked about this last week, it held the trends of the higher lows, higher highs. On the daily now, we are basically outside of the resistance I was talking to you guys about. If we filled the gap to almost $13.50 a share to $14 a share, we're above that now. So where is it going to be the reject? Where's the zone to watch? It's very difficult to pinpoint stuff like this because this is a like a multi-day breakout. It's extremely bullish right now. So all we can do is use levels in a given area. It's not easy to pinpoint this stuff. So it's just, it's basically like a, a bias to guess how you personally feel a rejection could come on a resistance zone. So using the area at roughly $16 a share, $16.50 to $17, that should act as a nice, I believe it, that should act as a nice area for a reject if Neil keeps pushing based off the rejections and support that we've had along this area. When we broke underneath, trying to hold the support around here, we broke down, recontested that it is a resistance and it failed. So we can use $16.50 to $17 a share as the potential gap fill on NEO in the upcoming days if it keeps that momentum going. Any pullbacks we have, we can use around $13.20 from the rejections we've had. Yes, we've broken above a few times, we couldn't hold on pullbacks. So we're focused on multiple candle touches in that 13.2 area. That's what we're focused on. So if NEO has a pullback, I'd watch $13.20. If we keep pushing higher, I expect us to fill the gap to roughly $16.80 a share for that resistance gap through. Switching over to PLTR, we're currently pushing upside. We held a new support, making higher lows still. We're keeping the trends in full bull effect at the moment. So can we keep the trends of higher highs going as well? Can we fill the gap to the upside? Going to the daily picture, I've been telling you guys, if PLTR can break out, I expect $23 a share to fill 
back to where we had a lot of consolidation. We have levels in between. So along the way, the only level I see having at least any respect at all is roughly $21 a share. Anywhere between there, we should see a rejection. That's roughly a, a three and a half dollar push to the upside on the shares. Until that level touches, all we can really use on the two hour are these current areas. There's not much more you can use since we're kind of like zoning and pushing upside. We're trying to break out like how Neo was. So if you want to look for a slight pullback on the smaller picture, the main levels I would look to see if they hold on a pullback, $18 a share. And the support underneath that is roughly $17 a share for like the main support that I would look for. I want to see a pullback to the trends if that is possible to happen. This trend right here. This is what I'd be focused on. So we'll pull back to roughly $17. I would load calls. That's what I'm expecting to do. If we keep breaking out, I expect this to fill the gap to $21 a share and eventually touch $23 a share to the upside. So QQQ, tech sector. Looking at the Q, I'm going to the daily just to show you guys this because I, I find this totally insane. We are literally just under $20 away from the all-time highs for the QQQ. Kind of insane to think about if you ask me. Currently, we are rejecting that 386 area as a resistance. I'm going to take away a few levels underneath just to take away some of the distractions. So knowing we have a resistance at roughly 386 based on historicals, that's been the rejection on a pullback to it and then drop downs uh, for a retracement, it's trying to hold support around that area. If you want to raise it up a bit to roughly 387, that is fine. I'm going to keep it at 386 for now. Going to the two hour time frame. Looking this, looking at this from a perspective of what could happen with what we're consolidating in right now. We have the main level. We're forming a nice base support at roughly 375 a share. And I'll put a level here just for the smaller picture. Come on. I want to make this a dotted line and make it purple just because it's not like a historical level, but in the current time frame on the smaller picture, this does act as something that could be important. So understanding on the smaller picture, we're holding that main support at 375 area, 375.50. The actual support break and hold underneath for a bearish transition to the downside, 372 a share. If we break and hold above 386, and we break above and hold 387, 388, we should push up to the exact number. Let's go back to the daily and see if we can find any reasonable area that we could fill a gap to. Me personally, with how hot tech has been, earnings this week with Apple, with uh, Amazon, AMD, it could play a huge effect in the how the QQ moves based off their reactions. I expect to push up to 395 if tech stays hot. 395 tap out level. That is my expectations. We need a break and hold above 386 to 387 a share, and we should fill the gap to 395. If we reject and pull back, we have a massive support at 375 area, 375.50. If that level breaks, the last level to hold is support is 372 before a sell-off back to the 360s. So looking at Snapchat. Snapchat had earnings, had a sell-off. I'm going to the daily to see where we're currently sitting at now for this stock. And we're trying to hold a support that played a pretty decent effect, that zone roughly around $10 a share. If we hold that support, we could fill the gap back to where the earnings sold us off. But if we break under and hold as a new support to resistance flip on this zone, under $10 a share that holds as a resistance could show more downside for SNAP back down to $8 a share possibly. If we do hold $10 a share and push upside, we have a lot of resistance in between that zone right here that I'm highlighting. With that level being roughly $11.80 to $12 a share, in between there is going to be a resistance zone. We held that when we pulled back after the breakout before the earnings report. This will play a huge effect roughly $11.70 to $12 a share, that's going to be the resistance gap fill. So we have a gap from $10 for support and then $11.70 for the resistance level on Snapchat. So I'm going to come back to the uh, SPX and the SPY for the end of the recording. I'm going to skip over to, come on, we're going to do this.
Uh, there's only seven people today. Yeah, there's only seven people right now. It's it's a Saturday, bro. Nine. Well, there's eight right now. It's a Saturday, so I totally understand. I was talking about this before the recording, and I think a lot of people may not have noticed that we're doing this Saturday now instead of Sunday. It's so that the newsletter for Rippy Global it contains the link for the weekly charting along with the preparation type or that uh added types for the actual newsletter that he sends out for everybody. So going off TLT, Treasury bond. We're at a support area right now. Uh, yeah, Donnie, what's up, bro? Go ahead and type it. If you want to verbally talk, you can too as well. It's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Hey, Lucy, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good, bro. What's up? Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm good too. I just had a quick question, but it, it's too long, lengthy to type, so I'm going to speak it. So my question was, so you were mentioning this support and resistance levels, right? Mm -hmm. So have been having cases where like I was able to chart the support and resistance properly. And when the stock or the op stock reaches the, for example, if it's a resistance, so I'm pretty sure, okay, if the stock reaches as this, this price, it is going to come down. But what happens is like uh, there is resistance. So I try to end up puts over there. But then what happens is the stock just goes up, maybe like a dollar or two, then it comes down. So it's like I go around like maybe like 30, 40 percent loss and then I start recovering. So like, do you have any suggestions like before I enter? OK, check on these things. And then enter rather than if, if, if the stock just reaches the resistance level, like don't enter at the right point. So is there like any suggestions that you have on that? Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, I, I get what you're saying 100 percent. So let me keep this question after the take these. Uh, 3700, bro. I'm going to answer this real quick as I chart a TLT right now. I'm going to make it go with the actual charting. So what you're speaking on and I'll give you my best possible uh response to that it's he's basically saying like i get stopped out because it drops underneath the zone and it possibly pushes back up when that happens you have to either readjust or you have to size light with time and let the idea of like we could drop underneath and pull back inside a lot of the time when i chart stuff like this and for an example with uh tlt i'm going to give you like how i personally would do that the main level that i'd be looking at you can use the very bottom, but like I tell you, I like to see multiple touches area. So I put a level for me around 98.9 area. If you get whipped out a lot, this is the risk that you would have to take of having more patience. Find the lowest possible wick in those areas. So instead of having a level, like what I usually do at roughly 98.8 area, you could lower this to where we've had grabs on liquidity. So, oh shoot, why that move? So we put a level down here at 97.5. That's slightly underneath the other supports that other people may see. So if you want to give that room on the downside, this is where, say you enter around this double bottom, what we have right here, this is a support level around $97.90 a share. If you enter calls here and your stop loss, let's say is like right here at the bottom, you could even lower this a little bit more only because you understand this could fake out. It could drop a little bit more. It's very difficult to pinpoint an exact location because liquidity grabs, stop loss hunts, they're always going to happen. So the way that I personally avoid them when I'm sizing and I'm charting stuff, if my main level for an entry is roughly $98.70 at this support that I like right here, I know, okay, we have potential to drop down to $97.80 area. I'm going to go back to the daily so it's a little bit easier to see on the bigger picture. So I know we could drop down to that 97.8 area. So me understanding that, maybe I'll give that stop loss a little more room and I'll lower my entry level to where I know it could stop me out. I'll put my entry where my stop usually would be based off the chart and I'll lower my stop to an area where most candles don't reach there's no liquidity grabs. There's no buys on a fake out and then it pushes back up. This will give you the room needed, but you have to be more patient with your entries at that point then. Because usually like for me, I was just saying, I'd be looking for an entry around here, but if you don't want to risk buying here and it pulls back to the white highlight or the white line right here, then it bounces right back above the blue line. 
just extend the levels a little bit. You have to be more patient. You may not get the entries you want, but that's where you can use that to your advantage. It's very uh, draining if you don't have that much patience. You're going to take less trades because they're not always going to pull back to your entry at that point, but it's also going to limit the losses you take or the stop losses possible because how many tickers do you see pull back to support to this 97.3 after we broke above it? No tickers touched that on the daily time frame. There was one rejection we had before the breakout and it never came back down. So using the blue level at 90, uh, 97.8, this could be your entry. And if the white breaks underneath, there's a very low chance that it will pull back to the upside. So that's like how you have to readjust. For me, this is what I would usually do. Entry around 98.7, stop loss at 97.8. For you, if you keep getting shaken out from stuff like that, because me, I size very light and I just hold. I add a lot of time. Lower yours to the next possible, like, quote unquote, standpoint of an entry point. So going off your method, main support for this would be 97.8. Stop loss, I would have it roughly 97.3. If you're looking for just, I want to see strength before a pullback does happen, if 98.8 area can hold this support and start to make an upside, you may not be able to enter because you wanted to see a more lower point pullback into it. It's not going to work every time. It's not 100%, but lowering levels to the lower support will give you that edge. So going off of this example, the main support that I see, 98.8, support underneath. If this breaks the 97.8, we have to hold under 97.3. So it's kind of like readjusting the levels in the moment. If we do push upside for this uh, TLT, I'd be focused on a resistance roughly around $101 a share, $100.70 a share. Around there is going to be the gap built to the upside. And I'll continue talking on this for the next ones that we do. I'm going to move over to Tesla now. I'm going to go to the four hour. So here's an example for Tesla, like what you were just asking with that question. As I'm charting, we have the same levels for Tesla still uh, representing, they're still correlating. We have a level at $266 a share that's currently acting as a resistance, historically held as a support. And then before that support, it acted as a resistance. So we have that level. We have this support for a double bottom on the smaller picture for Tesla at 256 a share, 255.90. So we have this support level. Using these levels, would you personally, for like what you were just asking about, if you enter on this support, this is the next level of support underneath the 240. So you would just have to either decide, do I want to be patient and wait for the pullback to 240? Or do I want to just wait and see if like, oh, we keep chopping between 255 as support and then the resistance at 266? I'll just play this zone right here. Because Tesla can easily, any stock easily break underneath have like a four hour wick down here and then shoot right back up to highs. It's very common because the hedge funds know where to, where to grab at. They know where these areas are. This is a liquidity grab around here on Tesla, around 248, 247 area. If that pulls back, it could still bounce. So if you want to use a different strategy of, I don't want to enter at 255 because if it drops underneath, I'll sell for a loss and it still goes higher. If it like has like a nice dip buy, Use this level on Tesla in between. It's like reading between the lines. 248 area is going to act as a support, but it's not going to be massive until it actually shows it in the moment. I'm going to change that to white color. So that 248 right here. Notice how when uh, 255 breaks, grabs, pushes back up. Breaks again, grabs, pushes back up. When 248 breaks, we have 240 underneath. So it's like a level system. Where are you going to be content with to give yourself less emotional standpoint of I sold for a loss and it came right back? It's very difficult, bro. Like that's the hardest part about conviction with trading and understanding. For Tesla, a break and hold above 267, we should fill the gap to 284. If we break under 255, we could catch a liquidity grab at 248. If 248 breaks underneath, we could also bounce off 240. So we have three major levels before the actual gap fill back to 218, a share 220. Moving over to XLV. So on the daily, just like this is the same thing as the other healthcare sector, I'm not going to have to chart this because it's the same indice. They both move the same. We're making higher lows, same resistance area. If we correlate this back to the other healthcare, uh, 
which one was it? Let me see where they're going to be exactly. There we go. IXJ and XLV are the exact same setup. So if you want levels for the healthcare sector, just correlate the levels with. There we go again. There we go. IXJ, it's the same setup. IXJ and XLV, same chart setup. Just correlate the levels and you'll find them. I'll do it very quickly for you guys. There's going to be a level at the double top on healthcare, roughly around $135, $136 a share is going to be the resistance on a pullback to support, same as the other one. I would like to see a contest of the higher lows off the trend right here, which will be roughly $129 a share. If we pull back to $129, a bullish sediment should buy with buyers and push it back up. If we break and hold above 136 a share, we should see all-time highs on the healthcare sector. So moving over to XOM now, same levels as last week. We're still chopping and consolidating between these two lows or the, the two levels of the highs and the lows. Support on XOM is roughly around $101.80 a share. Notice how it pulled underneath and went back up. This is when you have to figure out where am I going to put my stop loss? because XOM held the liquidity grab right here. This has happened before with XOM. So you have to try and read between the lines and figure out where is a level that I have to watch for that I could get faked out on. I like to catch entries on like the hidden candlesticks. Many people don't notice. That pullback on Exxon Mobil to roughly $100 a share was the buy and it went right back up to the 107 uh, resistance level. So until Exxon Mobil breaks above and holds 107 a share, 108 a share, it's going to keep zoning between basically $100 a share and $108 a share. So now moving over to e, uh, EPEV, XPEV, my bad, XPEV, same setup as NEO. It's breaking out. It's going to be very difficult to pinpoint where we're going to tap out at, but we're currently at a nice zone of a historical support that could act as a uh, resistance right now. At roughly $23 a share, we are above that. So a pullback to $23 a share would be a support level. If you're going off the smaller picture on the one hour, you can also use the level from the last few days at roughly $21.40 a share for a support. If we keep pushing higher, the gap fill that I would expect to happen on this stock is roughly $25.70 a share. Roughly around $26 will be the gap fill to the upside on XPEV. So now going back to SPY, looking at SPY, I've been talking to you guys about like the same levels all week. So I'm going to be very short with this. I don't want to talk too much because we have earnings again this week. And I want to just let the chart do its thing before this next week charting session. Going to the one hour time frame on SPY, we held the pullback. To four hundred fifty-one dollars a share, we caught the grab. They did last time. We pushed right back up. At this point, with spy, if we stay in bullish sediment, we have a main support at four hundred fifty-six point five area. If we break that support, we have a level at roughly four hundred fifty-four dollars and fifty cents. The main gap fill is going to stay at the four hundred fifty-one dollars and fifty cent area. If we break upside, we need a break and hold above the psychological number of $460 a share for a SPY. If $460 a share breaks and holds above, SPY will have a fill. Notice the wicks on the daily right here. Notice the pullback, bought up, push up, rejection. SPY is going to fill this gap to roughly $462.50 a share. That is the gap fill as of right now for SPY. I'll go back to the two hour and show you on the current levels right here, 462.4, 462.5. That is the gap fill I'm watching for SPY. If we break and hold above that, all-time highs could be coming pretty soon. And just like what uh, Mr. Trade said, above 450, if we, if we hold above 458, for me, four, uh, 460 a share, if we can hold on a pullback, like if we, if we pull underneath, 456.5, but we close above that level, holding 456.5 will be a massive support for the next uh, level's push to the upside to touch 460, to touch 462.5, possibly 463, 464 area. Going off SPX, 
same formation setup. I don't want to get too heavy into levels because uh, Rippy God, a.k.a. Hassan, he will be posting his analysis this week. Same setup as Spy, though. We pulled back to 45.28 on the actual liquidity grab, bought up and sent it. We have to hold above 45.80 on SPX. It can break under, but it has to hold above on the larger picture for the four hour, the two hour, whatever the case may be. 45.80 has to hold on SPX, break and hold above 45.90 and 4607 will push SPX just like on SPY. I'll go back and show you the same wicks that are going to be on this. What we're focused on for SPX are these levels right here. Hold up. SPX 4751. That's the same correlation for SPY if you're looking at the candle wicks on the daily. 47. 51. A massive move, yes, but that is going to be the gap fill if we break out above 4630 area, 4650, 4751 is going to come pretty quick and people may not be prepared for that. Uh, before I do stop the recording, I saw one question. Uh, Chris, you said same sector, but not the same chart. So yeah, so for the healthcare, every uh, index has multiple like tickers like industrial healthcare, consumer discrete, they all have like not just one index, XLV for healthcare and obviously IXJ. It's, it's the same overall setup, obviously not gonna be identical with price action, but the overall chart formations are pretty mirrored when looking at the two uh, side by side. Do you use the VIX movement and levels of confusion, uh, confused risk trade? So I look at the VIX, but I'm not very heavy on it. My sector watch list, I have crypto, the main two cryptos. I have the Dow Jones, the U.S. dollar, the NASDAQ, the QQ, SPX, SPY, uranium. And then I have the VIX and then the 11 sectors, which is obviously materials, communications, energy, financial, industrial, technology, consumer staples, real estate, utilities, healthcare, and consumer discrete. I have a watch list with just the major overall markets for everything. But I don't use the VIX as heavy as most people probably think. A lot of the time, the VIX can push, even though SPY is pushing. Sometimes the VIX can drop, even though SPY is dropping. So I use it, but I don't trust it. Like, oh, the VIX is going up. SPY is going to come down. I just watch it to see how things are forming on the actual chart, but I don't use it as heavy as most people probably do.